the stories of mahabharata retold by shudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard the details of the first day's battle the pandavas lost two major warriors uttar and sweta and it seemed the kauravas had an upper hand on the first day the first day of the battle didn't go well for the pandavas the generals and leaders assembled in yudhishthir's tent yudhishthir sat on a wooden throne while the medics were tending to his wounds he looked morose and void of any hope as krishna stepped into the tent yudhishthir looked up and said krishna what took you so long i have been looking for you all evening Krishna sat next to Yudhishthir and said, "I am here now. Tell me, how can I help you?" Yudhishthir held Krishna's hand and said, "Keshav, I think this war was a huge mistake. Bhishma is indomitable, and I should have never dared to fight a war against him. Just as the summer fire burns down the grasslands, Bhishma is wiping out our army." we might be able to defeat the gods but it's impossible to defeat bishwa i cannot subject my generals and my soldiers to the wrath of bishwa facing bishwa in battle is no different than facing death arjun has disappointed me he seems to be distracted and is hardly exerting himself only brother bhim is trying his best and have done the most damage to the kaurav army but truth be told with his naive strategy and simple man to man combat we cannot destroy the huge kaurav army even in a thousand years i feel hopeless maybe maybe i should surrender to duryodhan and take refuge in the forests keshav tell me what should i do arjun stood with his head held low bhim nakul sahadev din say a single word krishna knew the loss of uttar and sweta on the first day had sapped the pandava brothers of their will to win the war he looked into yudhishthir's eyes and said stop lamenting yudhishthir don't give up so easy today was only the first day of the war we still have a long way to go and we are all with you sikhandi is on your side and i know sikhandi will be the cause for bhishma's death and our commander in chief drishtadumnya is destined to kill drom you should not feel hopeless at all drishtadumnya knelt in front of yudhishthir and said o king I promise tomorrow will be our day I will create such a difficult formation that it will be impossible for Vishma to inflict any serious damage to our army The next morning the two armies faced once again for the second day's battle Bhishma attacked the Pandava army with renewed energy He targeted the soldiers from Chedi and Matsya and began to slay them indiscriminately. The continuous stream of arrows from his bow hit the Pandava soldiers like tsunami waves and wiped them off the ground. The great Pandava warriors Abhimanyu, Bhim, Satyaki, Drishtadumnya tried their best to stop him but failed miserably. The violent barrage of arrows from Bhishma was too much for them to counter. they had to give up and run for their lives the pandava army panicked they broke formation and began to flee the battlefield when arjuna heard the news 
They called upon Krishna and said, Take me to Bhishma, we must stop him. Krishna turned his chariot and sped towards Bhishma. The mighty chariot, decorated with colorful flags and drawn by four powerful white horses, tore through the battlefield with a loud roar, while Arjun's Gandiv spewed an endless stream of arrows that killed every core of a soldier who came on their path. Duryodhan ran to Bhishma and said, Grandfather, how could Arjun kill all my soldiers when you and Drona are both alive? It is for you, my gallant friend Karna, who withdrew from the battle and is sitting on the sidelines. Had he been present in the battlefield, I wouldn't have begged you. But I am helpless and I have no option but to plead you to do something to stop Arjun. Instead of showing your affection towards the son of Pandu, you should demonstrate your loyalty to Astinapur at this time of distress. Duryodhan's insult struck Bhishma like a lightning bolt. He felt like something was burning inside him. With bloodshot eyes, he looked at Duryodhan with pure disgust and said, I hate this job! I hate being a Kshatriya! He turned his chariot and drove towards Arjun. Soon Arjun and Bhishma faced each other and a spectacular battle ensued. The soldiers stopped fighting and watched their amazing warfare. The gods from the heavens watched the battle and said, Both of them are undefeatable. This war will continue till eternity. On the other end of the battlefield, Drishtadumnya was busy fighting a tough battle with Drone. Drishtadumnya knew he was born to kill Drone. But the way Drone was fighting today, it seemed like an impossible dream. The speed and agility with which the old Brahmin shot his arrows, hurled his spears and maces, he seemed like a man in his prime of youth. The merciless Kalinga soldiers of the Kauravas were thrashing the Chedi soldiers of the Pandavas on a different sector of Kurukshetra. Bhim came to the rescue. Arrows rained from his bow, killing hundreds of Kalinga warriors. The Kalinga king Srutayu and his son Sukradev rushed in to stop Bhim. Bhim picked up a huge mace and hurled it at Srutayu. The mace crushed Srutayu's skull like a coconut shell and killed him instantly. Sukradev tried to run away. Bhim hurled a spear at him. The spear tore apart Sukradev and killed him instantly. Bhim jumped on his chariot and screamed in joy while hurling spears with both hands. The Kalinga soldiers were scared to see the dreadful form of Bhim. They began to flee in hordes. The news of Bhim's devastation of the Kalinga army reached Bhishma. He knew he had to stop Bhim. He stopped fighting with Arjun and asked his charioteer to take him to Bhim. The moment he saw Bhim's chariot, Bhishma began to shoot arrows at him. Bhishma's arrows killed Bhim's horses. Enraged, Bhim jumped off his chariot and threw a mace at Bhishma. The mace hit Bhishma's charioteer and killed him. The scared horses jumped up and ran away with Bhishma at a frantic pace. Bhim thumped his chest and yelled in joy. Arjun's son Abhimanyu was engaged in a fierce battle with Duryodhan's son. Arjun came forward to help his son, but failed to slow the rate at which Arjun kept on destroying his army. In the meantime, Bhishma found the charioteer and rejoined the battle. Halfway into the battlefield, he found Dron trying to persuade the Kaurava soldiers from fleeing Arjun's wrath. Bhishma stopped beside Dron and said, I don't think we can stop Arjun today. He is fighting like a possessed man. Our soldiers are tired and scared. Let them go. The sun will set soon and the battle will end. Tomorrow morning, we'll start fresh. As the sun began to set on the western horizon, the trumpets and conch shells blew to notify the end of the day's battle. The Kaurava soldiers sighed in relief while the Pandavas rejoiced as the day certainly went in their favour.
The third day's battle began with a huge misfortune for the Kauravas. Bhim and Duryodhan were engaged in a fierce battle. Duryodhan is no weakling and is regarded as one of the greatest warriors. But Bhim sends brutal attacks overwhelm him. The incessant flow of arrows, spears and maces from Bhim was too much for Duryodhan to counter. Bhim picked up a powerful weapon and hurled it at Duryodhan. The weapon hit Duryodhan's armor with a huge blow and knocked him out. Duryodhan's charioteer didn't wait any longer. He turned his chariot around and fled the battlefield as fast as he could with Duryodhan lying half dead on the floor. Duryodhan's soldiers were scared and they too ran for their lives. Hearing this grave news, Bhishma was deeply concerned. If Duryodhan falls, that might mean the end of this war. He asked his charioteer to take him to Duryodhan's camp. Duryodhan's injury wasn't fatal. By the time Bhishma arrived at his tent, Duryodhan had already regained his consciousness and was trying to sit up straight while the medics were treating his wounds. When Duryodhan saw Bhishma enter, he couldn't hold back his anger. Ignoring his pain, Duryodhan stood up and lashed out at Bhishma. Tell me, grandfather, who are you fighting for? It can't be for us for sure. The way you fight makes me think you are actually helping your favorites, the Pandavas. How is it possible that with you, Drone and Kripa on our side, our soldiers are panicking and deserting the battlefield? This could have never happened if you had demonstrated your true self. If you love the Pandavas so much, you should have told me earlier that you don't want to fight for us. And if I knew your true intention, I would have never considered you as my general. Karna and I would have devised a different strategy. Duryodhan winced in pain as one of the medics put some strong palm on his wound. As the pain subsided, he continued. Now, tell me, grandfather, are you with us or against us? And if you're still with us, then go, fight, and wipe off the Pandavas from the face of the earth. I don't expect anything less from you. Duryodhan's insults entered Bhishma's ears like molten lava. He was furious with rage. With bloodshot eyes, he looked at Duryodhan and said, King Duryodhan, I told you several times, the Pandavas are undefeatable. Even the gods can't beat them. You expect too much from an old man like me. Still, I will go back to the battlefield and alone I will defend the Kauravas from the wrath of the Pandavas. You will see how much devastation I can cause even at this age. Saying so, Bhishma raced out of the tent and mounted his chariot. That afternoon, Bhishma unleashed his fury on the Pandava army like never before. He was unstoppable. Bhishma and his warriors killed thousands of Pandava soldiers. Arjun and the other Pandava brothers tried their best to defend their army, but Bhishma couldn't be tamed by any means. The Pandavas felt like their doom has arrived in the form of Bhishma and they began to flee the battlefield. Arjun was amazed to see Bhishma's fantastic warfare. All his life, he has seen his grandfather as a loving old man. He never experienced Bhishma's prowess as a devastating warrior. Engrossed, Arjun watched Bhishma tear apart the army with deadly precision. Krishna turned to Arjun and said, My dear friend, wake up from your stupor. The time has come for you to show your true gallantry. Shake off your weakness and hit Bhishma hard with your deadliest weapons. Krishna's harsh words brought Arjun back to reality. Yes, Keshav, take me to Bhishma. I will fight him. Krishna veered his chariot and took him to face Bhishma. 
When Bhishma saw Arjun approaching, he raised his arms and said, Come, Arjun, it will be my pleasure to fight you. Come, strike me and show me what you got. Soon, a fierce battle ensued between Bhishma and Arjun. However, Arjun seemed to be far less effective against Bhishma's attack. Bhishma's relentless arrows kept Arjun busy defending himself and he could hardly find an opportunity for a counter-attack. Krishna used his superior skills as a charioteer and drove his chariot in curves and circles around Bhishma, making him change his direction of attack. Still, Arjun couldn't make any dent in Bhishma's armor. Krishna felt Arjun is too enamored with Bhishma's gallantry and was not exerting himself enough. He knew this weakness of Arjun is going to cost Yudhishthir his kingdom. Bhishma is routing the Pandava army and they are in total disarray. If this continues any longer, the Pandavas would lose the war for sure. I cannot let this happen, thought Krishna. I will kill Bhishma myself and make sure the Kauravas don't win this battle. In the meantime, Satyaki arrived and was shocked to find Arjun struggling to defend himself against the Kaurava warriors who had him completely surrounded with Bhishma leading the attack. Scared to find Arjun in such dire straits, the Pandava soldiers broke formation and began to flee the battlefield. Satyaki called out to the soldiers, don't flee, my friends. It isn't appropriate of a Kshatriya to run away from battle. Fight with honor and serve your duty as a warrior. Krishna called Satyaki and said, You don't have to persuade them. Let them go wherever they want. Today, I alone will kill Vishma and the rest of the Kaurava soldiers. None will escape my wrath. Glowing with anger, Krishna raised his arm and in an instant, the deadly Sudarshan Chakra appeared on his index finger. Krishna jumped off the chariot and with the terrible Sudarshan Chakra spinning on his finger and spitting fire in all directions, he ran towards Bhishma. The sight struck fear in all and they all cried in fear of total annihilation. Only Bhishma wasn't scared. He put down his bow on the chariot floor and with folded palms he bowed to Krishna and said, O oh Krishna, I bow to you. I feel honored that you consider me worthy of killing with your own hands. You are the Lord of all beings and nothing can be better than to die in your hands. Please come, use your Sudarshan Chakra and relieve me from this life. He knelt down on the chariot floor and awaited for the Chakra to sever his head. Watching this dreadful sight, Arjun came back to his senses. What a terrible thing he was about to witness. Krishna had promised not to fight in this war. And now, because of his incompetence, Krishna had to pick up arms against Bhishma. A terrible shame engulfed him. He jumped off the chariot, ran after Krishna and grabbed his hands from behind. Krishna dragged him through the dirt while Arjun dug his feet down to stop him. Krishna, stop! Please stop and calm your anger, said Arjun. He dropped down and grabbed Krishna's feet with both hands. Forgive me, my friend. I was about to make you break your promise. Trust me, from this moment onwards, I will shake off all my weakness and fight with all my might. I will show mercy to nobody and I promise to kill anyone who comes to fight me. Krishna turned away from Arjun and said, Arjun, I tried several times to persuade you to do your Kshatriya duties. It seems your attachment to your enemy is still strong enough to cause them any serious damage. With this attitude, you can't defeat the Kauravas. But I can't let that happen. I want to see Yudhishthir on the throne of Hastinapur. If you can't help with that, I will make that happen myself. Arjun held Krishna's feet in a tight grip and said, Lord, please trust me. My mind is clear of all doubts. I will fight and keep my promise. You guide me and I will destroy the Kauravas. Well then, 
I will give you another chance, said Krishna. I hope you don't disappoint me again. Now, let's go back to the chariot and you show us how dangerous you can be with your Gandhiv. Krishna and Arjun mounted their chariot and Krishna blew his Panchajanya conch shell. The sound reverberated through the battlefield and struck fear in the hearts of the Kaurava soldiers. Arjun put on the deadly Mahindra weapon on his Gandhiv bow and shot at the Kaurava army. The mighty weapon struck in the middle of the battlefield and instantly vaporized thousands of Kaurava warriors, their chariots, elephants and horses. Arjun's chariot plowed through the Kaurava army and they experienced how devastating Arjun's wrath can be when he exerts himself into the battle. The fury with which Arjun attacked the enemy, it seemed he would completely destroy the Kauravas before the day ended. Fortunately for them, soon the sun set behind the western horizon, marking the end of the third day's battle. The Kauravas went back to their camp and when they sat down to account for the damage, they figured Arjun alone killed 10,000 charioteers, 700 elephants and the entire armies of the Prachya, Sobir, Khudrak and Malab provinces. Bhishma, Drone, Kripa and all the other Kaurava generals failed to check his fury. Concerned about their fate on the day ahead, they went to bed and try to get some rest before the fourth day's war begins at sunrise. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.